Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group. Thanks for joining me in today's video. Before we start, take a second to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss anything like our next live stream right here on YouTube every afternoon at 15.30 Eastern Time. Also, don't forget your free morning brief that's waiting for you over at ssftg.com brief. That way you can be sure you're loaded up with the major levels of interest for the day, as well as the morning charts and a couple of other things to get you started on the right foot. Now, maybe you're looking to get filled in ahead of time with video-based game plans every morning, every week, every month. Then take a look at the join button below the video to gain access to the SSFTG briefings. And if you want to get into the action in the nitty gritty, then you can check the live analysis rooms for the New York Stock Exchange open. All right, so today is another candle by candle analysis and psychology overview of what's been going on today as far as the S&P is concerned. But it's also a good demonstration of when the market is just flat out in a range, you got to know when you're in a range. Because if you're trying to trade a range like a trend or a trend like a range, you're going to get smeared across the floor. Uh, the big clue here is that the S&P opened up with, I mean... <laughs> I guess it opened up with a gap, right? I mean, it, it opened up with a two tick gap to the downside uh, or a three tick gap before filling it back in uh, relatively quickly on the first bar. And as always, we want to zoom out and kind of gauge where are we, right? If we zoom out, we can see this market is screaming to the upside and we just cycled off of a possible three press top. And if we're looking at it from a wedge perspective, we still have a long way to go until it falls and maybe find some interest down here. So this is by no means a great place uh, for, for anybody to really be doing much other than fading. And then we see it open here. I mean, look at, look at what happened on Friday. It was a mess. Uh, low close, open, tested it to the tick, trapped through it. We've got a boatload of low closes down here and a trap through it. We've got sellers who got trapped underneath, more sellers who finally got a bit of follow through. Maybe those shorts were stuck over the weekend and they're finally being given a chance to get out of break even. Either way, this is a range and we're starting off with a doji candle that certainly doesn't help anything. Then next up, we go into the follow through candle, which is a doji, <laughs> even better. Uh, so again, we're looking backward and seeing, well, wait a minute, they're, they're showing a lot of support off of this area. It's a big range. Buyers are buying low sellers are probably going to sell high. So that means that if the market wants to rotate back above the highs that started the day off, we're probably going to find sellers up in this area to attempt to move the market back down. Uh, and if the market does push lower, then we're probably going to find buyers underneath the new low to try to push the market back up. We're in a range. That's what you expect to see. We have a move up to the highs, nice bull bar, still closing below the moving average and double topped on the high. Sellers will be looking to sell here. They'll be fading above the highs, pushing back, etc. cetera. Uh, and it did also come all the way down to the lows at 36.88.75 and found support there too. So it kind of it kind of played with both sides a little bit there. Uh, and we poke up above the highs and it fails back down again. So this is further proof, right? A really strong bull bar, failure to launch. That's a great sign. That means that the range is definitely prevalent here. It also closed for the first time above settlement and then failed right back down on top of settlement. A lot of clues here saying that the market's still potentially range bound. If you were just coming in, this is something where I would look at and say, you know what? I want to be a buyer down here and I want to be a seller up here. That's really about all I want to do right now. Uh, as it stands, this is just too gross. Now, one thing that might stand out is sellers might see this as an opportunity to short. Obviously, this is a terrible candle to short under. You want a much stronger bear bar like this. That's a good bear bar to short under. But sellers will still take the short looking for a secondary drive to the downside. This is one of those things that I like calling an algo trap or an algo sinkhole. Sellers who are using a brain realize that this is not a, a great location, but Computers, they don't have that benefit. There is no gray area in a computer. It's either a one or a zero, a yes or a no. This is a second short from the highs. This is where they're going to trigger in. Uh, now, we can use that to our benefit in understanding that there will be sellers there. And if we're in a range, I might want to be a buyer there. Right? I don't believe the seller is there. They don't have a case at all. So if it can go underneath it, I would rather be a buyer there and look for it to reject back up. Now I'm utilizing the support underneath me to help rather than hurt. 
They go back down, they hit the lows. It didn't really bounce yet. Strong bear bar to the downside, but again, the last time we saw a strong bar, that was a failure. And this is a strong bar back down to the lows of the range. Probably going to be a failure, right? Uh, again, if you were just coming into the market, you'd be looking to buy below the lows, sell above the highs, stay out of the middle. Big rip to the upside. So the longs off of the bottom had a gigantic leap to the upside, and this is a huge bull bar. This is one of those things that will trap people over and over and over again because it looks like it's the start of a really strong trend, right? Look at this candle. It's breaking above the range. It's back above the moving average. This thing is an ox. It's a brick of a candle. It's the kind of candle that's trying to create a statement saying that the buyers are here and they're trying to pressure it up. But what do we know about this day so far? We opened up in the middle of a giant range. The first five bars have done literally nothing, and we've finally just poked above the highs, and there's increasing volume, right? Although light, it's increasing volume. It's more likely that sellers are coming in here to defend, right? Sellers defending the highs of the range. Maybe they're defending their earlier entry point from the previous day, right? Whatever the reason may be, they're going to be looking to short up here, not buy, Dumb money is going to be buying up here looking for a breakout. Smart money is looking to fade the initial breakout and buy cheaper. If they want to go along with the move, why in the world would they ever want to buy up here? Right? You want to buy down here. You want to buy the pullback. You want to buy down here. This is where you've got optimal uh, probability versus your risk reward. Way up here, all you've got are scalps, which means high risk, low reward, high probability. It's a nice little trade off there. So this big bull bar up is probably going to get sold more than anything, uh, but it may find some continuation. It's just not as likely. We get the next bear bar back down again. It did fail and sellers immediately sold the close of that bull bar right back down into the range and it closed underneath the range. So this might be a pop to the highs and a failure. Sellers may be looking to rotate this down if they can trigger underneath this most recent bear bar to try to drive the market back down to the lows of the range. There's still room. Right? So if they're shorting at 90 half and their targets are at 89 half, there's still enough room for at least a four tick scalp, plus a little bit of extra meat on the bone too. Uh, so sellers will look for shorts if it triggers underneath this bear bar. Ooh, and it doesn't trigger underneath the bear bar and goes back as a bull bar back up. Now it's a weak bull bar. It closed right on top of the range again. Uh, but keep in mind, this might be creating a new range. Remember, this is a new day. So this range might actually just be widening out to here. You can still kind of see that same range and you can still kind of see how you would be able to subdivide this range up a little bit to kind of come to this conclusion. It makes sense. Realistically, this move higher, all it did was deviate one to one up. That's it. And now it's pulling back. So we're back at this area where it's kind of like a 50% pullback. We're also back to settlement and every time the market's tried to break lower, it's failed. Every time the market's tried to break higher, it's failed as well, but at least for the benefit of the buyers, we've got higher highs and higher lows, and that's still continuing. We haven't broken a new low. There is no lower low. Uh, so we're still showing bulls at least trying. And now with a failure of sellers to trigger underneath and a bull bar closing back up, this is their chance to try to take the move back up towards at least the highs of the range. And that's exactly what they do. We get a gap to the next candle. It rotates all the way back to the highs of the range. And then from here, this is where you expect to see profit taking again. The last time the market was here, buyers probably got suckered. So you're going to see those buyers looking to exit at break even. And that might be enough to pressure it back off 94 and drive the market back down again. And it ends up as a doji and fills the gap back down. Now that gap failure down to 92 quarter in a rotation back up, buyers bought below the previous bull bar. What do we know about a range? Buy low, sell high. It's hard to get much lower than a five minute range buying below a five minute bar, right? <laughs> it works out pretty well. Uh, so all things considered, this is kind of what you expect to see. But the fact that it rejected off of that gap low would suggest that buyers might have a little bit of oomph left to try to get a move back up. They get another close outside of it, doesn't close at new highs. And realistically, this is just retesting the area where sellers tried defending from before to the tick almost. Uh, it's coming into 1030 and this is a common time for the market to start to stall or potentially even reverse. Uh, so we're not seeing anything really proving much for the buyers. It's still a little bit rough. 
We get an inside bear bar. That doesn't prove anything. And you can tell it didn't prove anything because that's the lowest volume there have been all day. Nobody made any decisions on this candle. It's not doing anything. Uh, buyers will buy below the lows, assuming that it's a range. And sellers will sell above the highs, assuming that it's a range. But it's just kind of waiting at the moment. After this pause, we have a bullish breakout continuing back to the highs and trying to break above the range once again. Now, what we've seen already is that this is pretty much a gigantic waste of time and the buyers really aren't gaining any confidence up here. And now we're forming a little bit of an ascending wedge that's running out of time. We're in a major zone of resistance. Buyers are trying to get a breakout to the upside, but with this new high, we see an increase in volume, once again, suggesting that buyers are taking profits, sellers are coming in at the top and trying to pressure back. And not to mention that it's also 1035, we're getting a little bit later into the afternoon, uh, or later in the morning, rather. We get a bear pullback, but it's an inside bear bar, it doesn't really prove much, and you can see nobody really did anything, the volume is very low, uh, so just still kind of waiting. We get a bear bar back down, and now we see volume stepping up. We're in a range, buy low, sell high. We have a brick bottomed bull bar and it's likely that a lot of bulls got trapped up at the highs. That's great if you're trying to buy a dip because where's their stop? Their stop's gonna be below the lows right at the bottom of the short term range. That's the worst spot for their stop and buyers will look to buy in on that uh, looking for a short term scalp bounce back up. Realistically, the bigger zone of support is going to be back down to at least 36.9175 and preferably down to 89 quarter. Uh, but now it's starting to get a little bit later in the day and now we're going on to 11 o'clock. And you can see, even with the current market, we're still stuck at these range highs. Nothing's happening. It's very, very slow. Uh, and today's a great day of learning how to be patient because if you weren't patient today, man, you were ripping your hair out. Uh, luckily for me, I don't have much left. So uh, <laughs> I guess that's a blessing in disguise. Uh, but hopefully you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. That's going to do it though. Uh, like we always say going into any of these, uh, when you're talking about candle psychology and when you're looking at it, even on these days that are really slow, there's still thousands of contracts that are being traded. Obviously, there are traders who think that there is something worthwhile putting money on the table for. So don't just get caught up thinking that ranges are a bunch of noise. There's a ton of information. You just have to flip the microscope on a little bit and take a little bit of a closer look. And sometimes the best way to do that is to zoom out on like a one minute chart or a 30 second chart and kind of get a feel for that internal structure that's happening within the range. But that's gonna do it. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Have a great one, enjoy, rest up, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks.